I can't remember, it was probably about three years ago that I realized that um, every sprint we had this demonstration. And this demonstration is always kind of the same thing. It's like, what did you do? <laughs> Show it off, right? And, uh, and I noticed it was always the same kind of thing. There's always a little presentation to kind of describe it, then I'd show the source code, then I'd show that it actually runs because no one believes you when they just look at the source code, that sort of thing. Now, of course, as a Emacsian, um, I noticed that it was always in this uh, particular list. Not take a little piece of paper and it's like, okay, I want to show this, I want to show this, I want to show this, but everything I was doing was just an Emacs. I just open up a buffer, open up a shell, run, run, run. And, um, and of course, you know, when everyone's looking, you end up fat fingering everything. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it just slows things down. And then what happens, you get, you start talking a little bit more, a little faster, and you know, then it just goes to hell. So, um, I started creating little functions that I could kick off because, as uh, Matthew was talking about, you could make a little function. It could do anything. You could bind it to anything that you want. And so I would. And pretty soon I had this little small collection of functions that would help me kick these things off without fat fingering anything. And so I packaged them all up and threw them up on the intertubes. Um, and so I ended up programming my demonstrations. I call it demo it. <laughs> because I have no, absolutely no creativity in coming up with clever names. Um, so this is kind of how it looks. Um, you basically create a list of all the steps that you want to have it do. So demo it create is uh, just this macro. And a macro can either be uh, a function that you want to call or an expression you want to evaluate, or a key that you want to press. That way you're only pressing the advanced key. So uh, let's take a look at this one here. So we have find file. You all know find file. <laughs> it just loads up a file into a buffer. And that is an expression. The next one I'm going to call for the next step will be this one function I've called called start shell. And it just starts up shell in a side buffer. And then when I hit the advanced key again, it's now going to run in that shell a phrase called Ruby, you know, calling my source code. And then I'm going to hit the advanced key and it's going to do a meta P, which goes up in the buffer in the history. And then I'm going to, my, when I hit the advanced key again, it's going to then insert every one. And that way I'll run this program twice with different parameters. Okay, and then all I need to do is just kick it off with the demo at start. Yeah. What do you mean by run it twice with different parameters? Well, uh, so I run Ruby example. Okay. Okay, and that runs it once. Okay. Then oh, I'm going to hit pull. meta p. Okay. And it's going to pull that down, and I'm going to append to it the word everyone. Oh, I see. And okay. it will run it twice. Okay. Let's see it. I'm going to run this in action. So I hit the key, and it does a find file. Oh, wow, it's awfully small. <laughs> um, sure, I can do something like this in order to make it we can see it. I'll fix that in just a minute. Um, so here it is. I hit the key again. It loads up a buffer or a shell. You started to pause. But did you start recording? I did. Okay, good. So we got that in the recording too. Yes. Awesome. So. So your demo insert text thing actually. Does it character by character with a Exactly, delay. Nice. because delay. why not? <laughs> okay, so now I hit it again. This is the meta P. And then I hit it again, and it types in everyone. And there you go. How about that? I've done this little demonstration very quickly. It looked like I was really live, and I didn't fat finger a single thing. Okay, and that's, that's, uh, all right, so let me go through some of those functions in a little more detail um, because I noticed that most of the functions are either about showing code or running code mm -hmm. or presenting, and then I've got the MISC <laughs> section. Um, so first on the showing code, I have four primary functions. One's called load file. So I could do the find file, but load file loads it up in a side buffer, because that's usually what I want. Um, 
because I'll have a presentation like this, and then I'll just load it on the side in a bigger font um, so that I can kind of see it a little easier. That's nice. I can move I can move the cursor around, and I can do all the normal things that I normally would. When I advance, uh, though, I'll, I can keep on going. The part file basically does the same thing, but it only shows, basically does a narrow to a certain section by line numbers, or you can give it characters if you really want to get specific. The pro, uh, so this is nice if you just want to show part of the code. What I like, though, is that uh, somebody created this thing called Fancy Highlight, and Fancy Highlight basically puts the rest of the code in a, a subtle gray and only syntax highlights what you want. So I like That's this a feature. Minor mode or a yeah, it's a it's a minor mode. Yeah, exactly. So I just pulled that in. So part file and fancy file act the same way as far as their behavior. Just one shows things a little prettier. Uh, I also found that I like to do some comparisons between functions or, or between source code files. So I have one. Um, function that takes two files and it just loads them up inside buffers like this. That way I can kind of compare Ruby and Python, which are kind of the same. <laughs> All right, uh, running code. So I have a, a function called start shell, and this can either start E shell or the regular shell, and it does it in a side buffer, and it has the same kind of parameters as far as how big to make it, do you do it on the left? Do you do it below or whatever? Uh, start shell will take a directory, a command, um, and like I say, side, right, below. I used to use the quoted symbols, um, but I thought I should do the colon symbols because they seem to be a little, I don't know why, but I actually have to maintain backward compatibility from when I did it before. So. Tick right and colon right work act the same. So, uh, but then I can then do run shell and it'll just kind of run it in the default shell. Uh, the name here that you see up above, um, yeah, defaults to shell. But if you have different names, then these things will run in whatever you want. So you, you could have multiple shells running and run things in different ones. Is your mic really off? Oh, I think that's the mic for this okay. through the thing. And if not, oh well. And then uh, show shell just brings it up. Okay, presenting. Um, so all presentations for me are in org mode files because that's kind of how we roll. Uh, there's a nifty little thing called org tree slide which shows each section as a single screen. So instead of having to collapse, move down, and reopen, you know, I just have a key and it just brings to the next section at a time. So demo at presentation just loads it up, quit quits it, but you never want to need to do that really. The function presentation return, basically uh, if you've got a, a shell open or a file, you call return and it closes that and just kind of goes to um, the presentation and then advances it a screen. So it's this kind of this wipe. Um, return with no advance, closes everything, but it doesn't advance it, and then presentation advance goes to the next section without it. So, you know, you've got them all. And then highlight phrase, that's what you saw at the beginning with the little green that it was going through. Um, so I can say highlight, give it a regular expression, and it'll kind of highlight it. Miscellaneous, uh, demo it, insert, this types into a buffer. <laughs> As if you were typing, um, you yeah. can give it a colon fast if you really want it to go fast, or a colon slow and a colon medium, and all this, and you know that sort of thing. Does it play keyboard sounds? I really want it to. I'm de really debating whether I'm going to do that or not. <laughs> can you just disable the rest of the keyboard and you can make the keyboard sounds while it's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I know. I, I keep <laughs> fighting with that one. Um, <laughs> in fact, I. Uh, yeah, yeah, okay. Uh, so highlight, do what I mean. Um, this is, so programmatically, you can give it line <clears throat> numbers and it'll highlight it, or a region and it'll highlight it. Uh, it's, also, it's also interactive so that you can highlight a region, or if you don't have a region, it highlights the function. 
Um, and that's kind of interactive, so I can just kind of jump around, hit a key, and have it just highlight things that I want to show it off. Uh, demo it show image is like load file, um, but it does it without the mode line, so it just kind of magically appears. So that's really a buffer down at the bottom. Uh, and then I, I sometimes find that I just have to do a, a quick org mode presentation. So I created a function that creates a demonstration and a, as an org mode, and that's all it does. So hitting the advance key advances through the presentation, and that's all it does. All right, so how to get started. Uh, I've thrown it up on Melpa, so you can just do a package install and call demo it, and it installs it. I have recently added a what I consider a metric shit ton of customizations. So you can like open windows, where should they show up? Above, below, left or right. Um, so you can kind of customize how all your presentations will look. All of these parameters you can give it to the demo it thingy so that you can kind of change it. So this time I want my windows on the side or above. Uh, and then of course all of those functions then take even more overriding saying say oh but this case I want it over here. Um, I also have created an info file and I'm so proud of myself. <laughs> so all the documentation that you could imagine is in uh, in org mode or, or in info mode um, so I can like let's go to uh, customization here are all of the functions so is, that, is that part of normal info mode the the key shortcut thing you're bringing up on the menus like well I'm seeing the ASD it's, it's 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 Ivy um, yeah I've got a Ivy link so that I can just jump to any link in an info file. Um, so that's a, yeah. a Ivy's a minor mode? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. And then I also have a temp, uh, a, yeah, a snippet template that you can grab. So uh, I do recommend when you start playing with it, there's, this thing is evolved on its own over years, so I may have added a bit too much. Uh, but then again, hey, why not? But start simple with what you want. Uh, there are quite a bit of examples in the uh, info file, like, um, yeah, I'm trying to put more examples like live coding. <laughs> so you can do live coding where you can hit a key and it'll type some stuff, kick off, yeah, as templates, and yeah. It, there have been some fun things like that. Um, yeah, anyway, questions? Well, I was just uh, curious, uh, things like demo insert it or whatever, like, uh, how do they find the correct window to, to start inserting the test into? Good, good question. Uh, th it's, this is not stateless by any means. It really is kind of a state machine that you're kind of manipulating. And that is one of the problems. That's why I kind of recommend keeping it simple at first. Um, uh, just because you have every step expects all the buffer positions, including the current buffer, to be in a particular state so that that function executes as if it's in what you think in your head. So if you uh, open up a presentation as step one, then open up a file as step two, that file is going to be the default thing. So it you expects do. you'll be in the shell buffer when you hit the advanced key. Okay, so that makes sense. Yeah, uh, I would like to have it. Uh, so version three, <laughs> I get around to this thing, uh, will be trying to do some sort of a snapshot so that you can say, oh, run step 10, and it sets up all the w uh, windows and buffers the way step 10 should be. And it would make debugging a lot easier. Because right now, you know, to test things out, you kind of run through it quite a few times. Um, yeah, so that's cool. Does this presentation run through demo it? Of course! <laughs> Here it is. So um, I create a few 
variables just to the source code that I'm going to bring. And here it is. Oh, let's make this a little bigger. So uh, the first thing I do is I put in a whole bunch of uh, keyword parameters that kind of override my current settings. So full screen, single window means get rid of all the other windows. Uh, I'm going to use advanced mode. I've got two minor modes. Uh, the simple mode uses space bar to advance. The advanced mode is F12. <laughs> They used to do a lot more things, and it's like, oh, these are stupid. So the, the minor modes have gotten smaller, so it's not really as advanced as advanced should be. Um, telling it I want to use eShell, not shell, and um, use a variable width when you show your presentation. And step one was to load up the org mode as a presentation, making it huge, baby. And then advance, advance. I'm going to find, you know, and then here's my mini demonstration here, <laughs> right here in the set in this section here. Um, and then, yeah, and then I'm just going through each one of these parts. Now you notice that there is um, this thing here. Excuse me. Uh, show file, a demo. Uh, these are these are functions. Um, let me just jump to the end here. These are functions I've created to do multiple things per step. So, for instance, showing part of a file. Okay, so I, I had that little section where I say um, show file. So what I'm doing here is I'm going to do a return, which closed the shell but didn't advance my presentation. I then killed the buffer just to make sure I could <laughs> reload it. Oops, excuse me. Reload it without uh, problems. And then I say, highlight the phrase demo it load part file. And then I actually called it. And then highlighted things with a colon line with a 5 and a 12. So I, I sometimes will create a function that does multiple steps at one time and then kick it all off with one, one step. Yeah, that's it. So, uh, nothing too complicated, I don't think, I hope. Um, yeah, I don't see anything too weird. Is this the same, some of your normal setup that works in your, let's see, how do I say it? So for instance, like you, you have the, refined the lines or hidden the lines between buffers and such. Um, for the look at the look and feel that you have, is that that's not part of the demo? It that's part of your your normal yeah. setup, or do you do you set that up in the demo? It or is it part of your natural setup? You know, the that line probably has blurred over that's the a, years, yeah. so I don't know. Right. Um, I've tried to keep this package to be just this. Mm -hmm. uh, so there's probably some things in my normal flow, like I'm using org bullets to highlight mm -hmm. things and stuff like that in an org mode file. Um, yeah, you'll notice like in my uh, demonstration here. So uh, uh, where's a good example? Oh yeah, here's a good example right here. Uh, so I ran everything in a variable width font, and yet this thing here, this section here, was in a fixed width font because I've actually got the little equal signs around it to make it, fit, mm. you know, a, a code thing, right? Mm. But I hide those normally, and so I've kind of put some feature in there so you can customize in the list whether you want those hidden or not for your presentations, but I always have them hidden anyway. So I would love to have other people, more people play with it. I've got a couple of users, not too many, because okay. this is like, this is weird shit. <laughs> right. So, um, uh, you, you know. It's out the, outside of the PowerPoint norm. It is. It is. Programming your presentations is only what we geeks do. And um, so, yeah, I've got a few people, that, you know, have given me pull requests and this sort of thing, right? But I'm not sure just how many people actually 
use this. So I would love to have someone uh, try it out and go, Howard, you have some feature that's not in here, whatever, since right. you've seen all my presentations. <laughs> right, it's like, my, I can't get mine to look like yours, so there must be something else, right? There must be, yeah, exactly, yeah, exactly, yeah. Does this install from the, like, the typical Emacs package repository? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So just did it. <laughs> so I had to refresh my packet because it didn't find it. Let's see. Demo it. There it is. There we go. So I tried to kind of explain <laughs> a bit so people know what it is. Because, yeah, I don't know. Demo it. Uh, that's a horrid name. I couldn't really call it demo. I couldn't feel confident about that. It had to be somewhat unique, but I I couldn't call it like Snagglepuss or something yeah. weird, you yeah. know, so and I couldn't, yeah, anyway. And then, uh, you know, some people have uh, suggested some names, but it's too late now. <laughs> it's up there. It's not changing. <clears throat> yeah, I should have called it Die, D-I, demo it for Emacs or something. You know? <laughs> yeah. right. It only seems right, like evil. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a perfect, you know. Yeah, any other questions? And Emacs be installed on, dare I say, Windows or Siglin, mm -hmm. whatever you... Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, that's yeah, a native. It's a, it's a native for Windows, yeah. Um, yeah, so, and it, and it works pretty well, uh, especially if you're kind of used to the Unix way, like if I have to get on a, a Windows thing, um, I'll load up Emacs and just kind of stay there because it's kind of Unix-y. Mm -hmm. uh, and I feel safer because this is my comfort zone <laughs> where the little buttons I don't quite understand so much. Um, so yeah, I'll, I'll pull up a, a, an E shell which acts like a Unix shell, but it's all within Emacs. So it makes that's me the, feel that, a little that's better. That's Emacs flavored shell, right? Yeah, well, it's a shell. You know, normal uh, what we'd call a normal but not, not shell, like a but it's style. all in Emacs. Yeah, it's basic. It's not Bash. It's right. not Bash, but it's close enough for most things. You know, you type in a command and it kicks it off. Um, however, all those commands are actually e Lisp functions too, so you can. Right. It blurs the two together. If you get used to it, it's really nice. I think I remember reading. Uh, page for it that they didn't recommend using it as like a like in Windows it, it, it certainly makes sense but like um, it uses buffers for all interprocess communication so like if you do a lot of pipelines it starts losing its yeah yeah you kind of Windows is still probably the best way to do it yeah but it's all uh, yeah but that's that's a whole other discussion it, yeah, maybe sorry. yeah maybe we should do that uh, uh, a whole thing on that another time because yeah there's a lot of actually some real cool features about it that I, I like it. Yeah it's probably really interesting. I'm still sort of uh, feeling my way around what I want my shell interactions in Emacs to be. My preferred way to go would probably be to use uh, terminal mode or term mode um, but I find it to be severely broken as a terminal emulator I made a laundry list of things that I would like to fix, but in the meantime, I need to use uh, something else. So right now, I'm making do with shell mode, but you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. I still run a separate Tmux terminal for command. That's, Real command yeah, stuff, separate I'm command starting command. to think that's what I'm going to go back to doing that. Yeah, it, it's kind of frustrating because I go open something, I go open over here, then I go open it over there. But I give all my full power shell tools. Yeah, if you if you're running a lot of programs, yeah, you, you kinda wanna do it that way. 